my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. And as you can see, I am not in my kitchen. I'm actually in beautiful Oahu and I am going to be doing a 7-Eleven taste test, Hawaiian style. So I just went to 7-Eleven, perused the aisles and picked up a bunch of stuff that I'm going to taste test today. I have heard and it has been confirmed that 7-Elevens here in Hawaii are much more like konbinis in Japan. So konbinis are one of the things I miss most about Japan. They are marvelous. The selection of food is incredible. They have lots of prepared foods and little prepackaged plastic containers, they have onigiri, they have all kinds of drinks of course, which is nothing different than what you can find here in the US, but the selection of ready to eat food is unparalleled. But the 7-Elevens here in Hawaii are actually pretty similar in terms of the amount of food and selection that you can get that are ready made. So today I'm going to go ahead and taste them. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is this. And this is a musubi. This is a jumbo garlic chicken musubi. Now here in Hawaii, they call these musubis. In Japan, this would be called more of an onigiri. And it's basically a rice ball with a little bit of nori, which is seaweed. And in this case, it contains garlic chicken, which I've never had before. A typical musubi here in Hawaii would be a spam musubi. That is like the traditional style. But I thought I'd get this one because it's shaped more like an onigiri, kind of like a triangle and it's a flavor I've never had before. 7-Eleven Hawaii Jumbo Garlic Chicken. Let me open this up. So I didn't open that correctly, so I was supposed to open it from here. <gasps> Japanese style, I was supposed to open it from the top. Oh well, I will do better on the next one. And I have to say, this is much bigger than an onigiri that you would get in Japan. Probably almost twice the size. There's the rice and there's the chicken. It is warm and smells divine. Sorry, it's a little humid here and my glasses keep sliding off my nose. All right, let's give this a go. Itadakimasu. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is really, really good. So it's about 8.30 in the morning here and this rice is really fresh. It is super soft and tender without being mushy but it doesn't feel like it's been sitting around at all. It's not crusty or dry or hard. It's warm and the chicken is garlicky, quite salty, but it's delicious. Absolutely delicious combination of flavors of garlicky chicken, very well cooked rice that's slightly sticky. And of course we've got some of the nori too, which is that great seaweed flavor. Mm, 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 mm. So what I also appreciate is the chicken that is used in this are chicken thighs. So nice and juicy and succulent and tender, not at all dry or overcooked. Because this is kept warm under little heat lamps, sometimes food can get a little overcooked, but not in this case. All right, I'm only gonna take a couple bites because I've got a ton of food to eat. Okay, next in my bag, I have this. And this is something similar that you might find in Japan. And this is somen salad small. They also have this in a large size, which is about twice the size. Now, somen is a type of noodle that is usually eaten cold, a very thin style noodle. And this is a salad. So it looks like there's cucumber, kamaboko, which is a fish cake, some cooked egg, it looks a bit like scrambled eggs, some green onions, lettuce, and somen, which is the cooked cold noodles. And there's a sauce in here. This is pretty much what you would find if you were to go to a Japanese kombini. So this opens up like this, uh, I think. Very tight seal. Oh, my hands are greasy. Let me try this again. Okay, okay, there we go. She asked me if I wanted chopsticks and I said yes, but there's nothing in my bag. So, alas, a fork. Feels kind of weird, but we gotta do what we gotta do. All right, so here's my somen sauce. And I'm gonna just pour this right over my noodles. I always like to hold back on the sauce because you can always add more. Now we're gonna stir this with a fork. Yeah. And I noticed right away the somen sauce seems to be a little bit thicker than what I remember it used to be, but it looks really delicious. All right, let's give our somen salad a go. Mmm, mm-hmm. That's great. And very, very similar to what you find in Japan. Kind of a shoyu or soy sauce base, 
with a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of vinegar. The noodles are wonderfully cold and cool, really great for hot weather. And then you've got the crunchy lettuce in there, which gives you a little bit of textural variety and crunch. A little bit of protein with the kamaboko. Delicious and refreshing, a nice little salad. Perfect for hot, summery weather. Okay, I wanna eat more of that, but I have to eat other things. So set that aside. So in this little bag, I actually have shumai, which are actually a Chinese kind of dim sum dumpling. So Hawaiian's culture is really rich in that it has many, many immigrants that came to work the sugar plantation. So there's an influx of Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, Portuguese, all to work in the sugar plantation. So you can see all those influences in the food. So I've never had shumai at 7-Eleven, so I'm very curious to see what these are like, but I love shumai. So you can buy either pork or shrimp, and I got three of each. So she put them in a bag for me. I'm not sure which ones are which, but, oh, I think you can tell, okay. So it's pretty easy to tell which ones are which because the shrimp ones are a little bit more yellow and they have a little shrimp on top. These look very similar to shumai. If you've never had shumai before, they were usually a pork filled dumpling wrapped in like a thin wonton wrapper and they are steamed, perfect little bite-sized dumplings. And they're typically pork. So I'm gonna try that one first. So, ooh, already they have a nice bouncy feel to them, which a good shumai should. There is a process in whipping up the meat, so it has a really great texture. I'm missing my chili oil, but here we go. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. That's pretty good. It has that kind of familiar MSG porky flavor in there. A little bit of a ginger flavor. It does taste processed. It tastes kind of similar to ones that you can get frozen, but very, very typical and in the traditional vein of a Chinese shumai. Pretty good. Now let's try the shrimp one. This one's a little softer in texture, not as bouncy. Looks like there's some imitation crab, I think, in there. There's little flecks of pink. Here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I like that one better. It has less of a bouncier texture, um, the flavor is a little bit more complex, too. A little bit softer. Not sure if I would distinguish that it was shrimp. Mmm. 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 A little bit of a crunch of water chestnut, I think, there as well. But both of these are delicious. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just craving a little bit of chili oil on that. A little of la gama, or even a little bit of sriracha. I love hot sauce with my shamai. So I'm getting a little bit thirsty. I'm gonna wash things down with the Hawaiian sun. Passion orange. All right, let's give that a go. Nice and icy cold. Mmm, smells delicious. Smells like punch. Here we go, cheers. Mmm. It tastes a lot like punch. Definitely artificially flavored. Very, very sweet. And not at all fizzy, but kind of nice to wash things down with anyways. So next to the shumai is another hot case, and they have manapua. And manapua are basically steamed bao. Again, influenced by the Chinese. Chashu is very, very traditional. Curry you do see, but not as much. So I got one of each. Now, I'm not sure which one this one is. Here's, here's the manapua. And as you can see, it looks very much like a white steamed bao. It even has the little piece of parchment paper on the bottom. Let's see which one this one is. Curry, that looks beautiful. Now, the bread is steamed and very, very soft. And as I said, these were in hot cases, so you get them right out of the case, nice and warm. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. The outside of Manapua is just like a steamed bao, just ever so slightly sweet, but soft and tender, and just a little bit sticky as you chew it up in your mouth, but just fluffy, cloud-like texture. The inside is really well seasoned, a really great curry flavor, not at all spicy, but really strong curry flavor, nicely seasoned, not overly salty, and goes perfectly with a slightly sweetened bun. Like that. Mm-hmm. So this one must be my chashu, easily identified with this bright pink paper. Traditionally, this paper would be just white, but I think at 7-Eleven, they want to make it easy to identify. So let's cut this one open. This is a very traditional filling. Ooh, look at that. And it looks just like what I remember chashu bao being like, the steamed ones especially. Mmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's great. Very generous amount of filling in here. It tastes very much like a traditional Chinese cha shu steamed bao. The filling is cha shu, which is a roast pork that is sweet and has a little bit of a kind of five spicy flavor to it. And then it's all chopped up inside. And again, kind of sweet and salty and savory. And then paired with this, again, very fluffy, soft bread on the outside. Lovely. Reminds me of going to Chinatown as a kid. Love it. Mm -hmm. More Hawaiian sun. So the first musubi I had was the chicken garlic musubi. Now here is the traditional musubi, but this is a, the deluxe spam musubi. 7-Eleven Hawaii. They wrap it like this. You also see musubi that have rice on the top and then the spam is in the middle. This is a deluxe one. It has a layer of furikake, which is a seaweed seasoning. And I believe there's some egg in here and then spam on top and then kind of tied together with a belt of nori. So this one has a really nice way of opening. You open it here and you pull the, oh, that's so satisfying. Yes, yes, yes. And you do this and you keep your hands clean, happy. All right, let's give this a taste. Here we go. Mmm. The flies know I'm here. Go away. Mmm. That's pretty good. A little bit too salty for me. Again, Spam is very, very salty. There's a little bit of a Tade shoyu sauce in here, which makes it even more salty. I think I definitely like the chicken one better because the proportion of protein to rice I think is a little bit more balanced than the musubi one, but still very delicious. I like the addition of the furekake because there's a little bit of sesame seed in there. It gives it a little extra sesame flavor, and of course you get more nori in there. Delicious, but I think a little bit more rice for me would make this a little bit more balanced in terms of sodium intake. So now I have something that's interesting, and it is this. And this is the 7-Eleven Hawaii's Spicy Ahi Inari. Now Inari, is little fried bean curd pockets that are usually filled with seasoned kind of sweetened vinegared rice. This anati is a little bit different because this is a Hawaiian take on it and they put some spicy ahi poke on top. And if you don't know what poke is, poke is absolutely delicious. It's kind of like a Hawaiian take on sashimi. So usually you have some kind of raw fish, although I've seen versions where poke is also other things as well. But typically, raw fish like ahi tuna, cut into bite-sized pieces, and then seasoned with shoyu, some onions, a little sesame oil, little sesame seeds. There are lots of different variations, but that's a typical one, a little bit of seaweed. The spicy ahi poke, I think, is probably one of my favorites. It's got a mayo dressing on it with some hot sauce, sometimes sriracha, and little tiny tobiko egg roe in there which give it a nice little crunch a little bit of seaweed topped on two scoops of rice is absolutely delicious it's a perfect lunch absolutely delicious now i've never had it on inari before so let's give this a go plastic film to keep it nice and tidy pull that back feels weird to be eating this without chopsticks but i'll just use my fingers all right here we go Mm-hmm. Pretty delicious. Mmm. Now I'm getting a little bit of that spiciness. So basically what you've got there is a pretty traditional nutty. You've got the rice and then you've got the bean curd on the outside that has a little bit of a soy sauce sweetness to it. And then you've got it topped with that spicy, delicious poke on top, which has sesame oil, kind of a sriracha mayo base on top. Delicious, absolutely delicious. I think I actually prefer that to just typical nutty. So the next thing I'm gonna try is also cold and it is the, this. And these you definitely see in Japan in the kombinis. And this is a 7-Eleven Hawaii tuna with cucumber sushi roll. So the way this works is you peel this out. So once you rip the label, it kind of unfolds like this. And then you pull this back and you expose the nori. And the whole purpose of wrapping the nori in plastic is to keep that really delightful, crisp texture. Roll your rice onto the nori. Pull this back. This is brilliant. So brilliant. And then you roll this back up. <gasps> so satisfying. I remember the first time I discovered this in Japan, I just 
just freaking out. I think I actually have an old video of me tasting these. Yeah, delicious. Now this is the tuna cucumber. Now the reason why I got this was my favorite flavor of onigiri when I was in Japan was the tuna mayo. And they didn't have the plain tuna mayo, but they had the tuna mayo cucumber here in Hawaii. So I thought I'd give that one a go. So let's taste and compare. Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Pretty stinking delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is a little bit different than onigiri in the sense that the rice is seasoned. A little bit of salt, a little bit of vinegar. You have sushi rice. And in the middle, we've got tuna salad, which is delicious, and a crisp stick of cucumber in the middle. Absolutely delicious. I am not a huge cucumber fan, but the combination of cucumber and tuna salad delicious and you've got the crispy nori on the outside fantastic so 7-eleven hawaii let's do 7-eleven hawaii all over the mainland u.s because i would be so happy <laughs> oh. Alrighty. so refrigerated case now let's try some bentos dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Now this is found in the refrigerated case, but on the package right here, I paid $7.99 for this, it says microwave for 120 seconds based on a 1200 watt oven. So there are microwaves in 7-Eleven, so after you purchase this or before you purchase it, you would warm this up and you got yourself an instant hot meal. A bento box or bento lunch is a box that has rice and usually some other types of ingredients along with it in Japan. So this is a Hawaiian take on it. Ooh, it's hot. So what we have here on this plate is a huge portion of rice topped with furekake, which is a seaweed sesame seed seasoning. We have some skimono here, which in this case is pickled daikon, and we've got lots of different protein. So this looks like it might be gyudon, which is like a stir fried, thinly cut pork. And we've got spam, a cutlet here might be pork tonkatsu, and we've got fried chicken here, lots of fatty proteins and lots of rice, so this is a big meal. So let me cut into here and see what this is. I think in this case, this might be fish. Let me taste it, here we go. Mmm, mmm, -hmm. mmm. So what I initially thought was tonkatsu, it's actually not tonkatsu at all. It's actually a little fish cake. It's delicious. It's like a better quality fish stick, nice little piece of fish with a kind of sweet tare sauce. It's not okonomiyaki sauce. Again, I'm impressed with the rice. Soft and tender, not dry. Mm-hmm. Fluffy and sticky, and then topped with furekake. Delicious. Now, typically when you have tonkatsu, you have it with a little bit of skimono, a little pickle. It has a delightful, big, big, succulent crunch the flavor is sweet a little bit vinegared it has a lovely flavor of daikon wonderful combination with fried foods really really good all right let's have some spam now this looks like it might be in a teriyaki sauce let's give that a taste you need lots of rice with your spam mm -hmm. definitely spam that's been sweetened up with a little bit of a shoyu soy sauce teriyaki sauce. Good, but a little goes a long way. Let's try some of the beef, which looks a lot like gyudon. Mmm. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what that is. That is gyudon, that is thinly sliced beef in a soy sauce kind of tare sauce. Because the beef is so thin, all the flavors of the sauce kind of penetrate into the meat. Really great and must be accompanied with rice. Just must. Mm -hmm. Lastly, let's have some of this fried chicken. Now, this is microwave, so our fried chicken is no longer crispy. But, alas, that's what happens when we refrigerate and microwave food. Mm, it's still pretty good. The fried chicken is a thigh, so it's really juicy and full of fat, so it can withstand the kind of reheating process. Usually, when you have fried chicken and you reheat it, it's not all that great. And it's definitely not as good as it freshly fried, but for a meal that you buy at 7-Eleven, 
it's pretty stinking good. So there's a lot of food, a lot of calories, a lot of protein in this bento box. Now you have to remember the origins of this meal came from the plantation days when field workers would take this meal with them out into the field and they needed those calories. That is where this came from. Granted, these days times have changed, but the tradition of eating this food remains. Another hot meal, and it is this. And this is the baked macaroni and beef. Now, I noticed lots of people ordering this at the delis and the supermarket. Now, this was $3.39, and it's set to microwave for 75 seconds in the microwave. Here we go. We have elbow macaroni. We have what looks to be like a marinara tomato sauce, lots of cheese, and some ground beef. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. And that's exactly what you have. What is different about this though, is there's a significant amount of sugar in there. I think kids would love this. It's kind of like a hamburger helper meal with a good amount of sugar added to it. You've got the melty cheese that kind of glues and ties everything together. And then you've got the spaghetti sauce flavor with a good amount of sugar. It kind of makes it taste a little bit more like SpaghettiOs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, the pasta is very, very, very soft. So I think this would be a hit with the kids. Next, I have this, and this is a more traditional Hawaiian type of dish, and this is Kalua pork and cabbage bowl. Underneath, we've got our white rice and cabbage, green onions, and our pork. Oh boy, this looks delicious. Mmm! Pretty good. Pretty salty. Let me get some more rice in that. Mm-hmm. Again, the rice is excellent, tender, soft, sticky, beautifully cooked. On top of that, we've got a kind of smoky pork that is very, very tender, well braised. And then the cabbage in there is quite nice. I was expecting it to be softly textured, but it's not. It's just barely cooked. You've got some crunch of the cabbage, which I appreciate because you've got some of that variety that's going on in your mouth. And you've got green onions to kind of liven things up. Oops, really nice. Although I do want some hot sauce. I don't know if that's traditional at all, but something about smoky pork just begs for hot sauce to me. Hawaiians, do let me know if that was sacrilegious to even think about putting hot sauce on your Kalua pork, but something about this combination to me says hot sauce. But delicious. All right, more Hawaiian Zen. My gut is officially busted. That is 7-Eleven Hawaii for you. Absolutely marvelous. Dear 7-Eleven, I would be most happy if you brought 7-Eleven Hawaii to the mainland because I would have a little bit of Japan's kumbinis around, which I really do miss. But if you are ever in Hawaii, do check out the 7-Eleven, simply just for the selection. If you don't taste anything at all, just go in there and peruse. Just appreciate the plenty and the plethora that exists at 7-Eleven Hawaii. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know down in the comments below if you've been to 7-Eleven Hawaii, what your favorite thing is. If you've never been to a 7-Eleven Hawaii, what's your favorite thing to get to the convenience store? Me, probably be Mentos, mint Mentos, solid. Alrighty, thanks for tuning in. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Boy, I think I've gained 10 pounds on this trip. I need to go home and do some mad sit-ups or push-ups, squats, the whole nine yards. <sighs> yeah.